What's good my people? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to JP Sports TV. So here we're going to talk about a roundup of the Premier League games that took part over the weekend and Monday night. So it started with Arsenal, the greatest club in the world, winning 3-0 against Fulham. Very comfortable, um, quite enjoyable. I was very pleased with how Arteta set up the teams. Excellent results. Um, hopefully this season we can therefore challenge for at least the top four. Um, Palace beat Southampton 1-0 and um, Wolf Zaha scored a goal, a great goal. And after the game, all of the the talk was about Hudson basically saying that Zaha wants to leave and he's been talking about leaving for a very long time. Um, I've seen Zaha put on his Instagram, he put a picture saying opinions ain't facts. Remember that, you know, and we know he's definitely talking about what um, Roy Hudson said, you know, just to try and calm the fans down. Um, but yeah, it was a great start for Crystal Palace anyways. Moving on, Liverpool leads 4-3. Liverpool just about won that game. Very entertaining game of football, but defensively terrible. Liverpool, you have um, the best centre-back in the world. Um, Van Dijk had a terrible game and all of the stories was basically about him. Is Van Dijk finished? Is Van Dijk going downhill? Like, what's going on with Liverpool at the moment? You know, they're looking at the Liverpool before Van Dijk signed, where they leaked a lot of goals. Um, are they getting complacent? Um, personally, I feel like we have to... Liverpool have kind of been struggling. I feel like after being knocked out of the Champions League last season, I think in the quarters, um, don't know if it was the 16s or the... I think it was the quarterfinals. Um, Liverpool have not really recovered. Like, they've had a lot of... You know, they've had a few defeats, even against Arsenal, um, getting peppered by Arsenal. You know, we've had a lot of struggles. Like, you can see defensively, they're not as solid as before. Now, again, it's still the same players. So, they do have time to recoup and then get themselves back to form. So, we can't look too much into it. But if this continues, you know, then it's going to be a bit mad. But Leeds showed a lot of attacking, a lot of positivity, the way they um, they dominated going forward, which is something to look forward to. At least we know Leeds are a team that can score goals. So, they might do something decent this season in the Premier League also. West Ham... Nil Newcastle two. Um, great start by, by Newcastle, considering that this takeover has not happened. Um, there's a lot of issues, obviously, at the club, financial issues. We know that Mike actually what claims he wants out of the club. He wants to sell the club, but um, he's frustrated. I think he's taken the Premier League to court. It's what we've seen online and things like that. But um, great start by Newcastle, anyways. West Ham again. Feel like they might have a difficult season, man. They might have a different. I feel like the manager they have is a manager basically that's that was only good at Everton. Like he's absolutely ruining his reputation more and more. The longer he goes on managing these these type of clubs, I feel like David Moyes probably needs to go and manage like a some national team abroad or something like that. You know, I feel like right now, like he's like a, his reputation has just gone downhill. He's not really been doing anything. He doesn't really add much values to teams. He doesn't make them stronger or harder to beat. Like I don't really know what his philosophy is, but. Who knows? They still have a few talented players. Leicester free um, West Brom nil again. Leicester looked very, very good. You get me? They, they started this game the way they started last season on fire. Um, we were talking about Moyes earlier, but we got someone like Roy Hudson. Um, I said Roy Hudson. Brendan Rodgers, a manager who obviously I feel like underrated in my opinion, very underrated. But this is a guy who actually studies the art of management. You know. He's he's taking himself to different countries to learn different philosophies to apply to his own trait, you know. And we can see when he manages a team, there's therefore something about him, you know. Like he he wants a possession play, um, based team. He wants a team also that presses, and he wants a very offensive team. And he also likes an organized team. And I feel like with Leicester, if Leicester had a budget that other teams had, I feel um, Brendan Rodgers could do. Um, he could therefore have another season like last year. You know, I don't feel like the squad's good enough to break into the top four this season. But he therefore has them playing the right way. Um, it was an interesting game. The biggest game of the weekend was Tottenham versus Everton. Everton won Tottenham nil. Tottenham lost at home. Beginning of the season. I think it was Jose Mourinho's first defeat um, at the beginning of the Premier League season. Um, and yeah, what can you say about Tottenham? They just look lethargic. They look like... They just look lost. 
no philosophy again. Mourinho, arguably one of the greatest managers in history, has won a lot of titles, proved himself in many countries, uh, manages, uh, managed a lot of top clubs. But for the last decade, Mourinho has not been the same Mourinho. Like, he's been outdated, basically. His style of play where um, he had like a defensive lineup with like great, talented players, which will definitely score one or two every game, no longer exists. You know, back in the day, at like Chelsea, he had a Frank Lampard, a box-to-box infielder who was scoring a lot of goals. He had Didier Drogba, and a, a striker who could do two man's job playing up front by himself. You know, and then he had quality players all around the pitch. He had Ashley Cole, he had Terry, Carvalho. He had a solid team. Now, Mourinho does not have the same solid team. So this is where people are going to judge him to see what type of manager is he. And he's tried to apply the same old ways of playing with, um, with Tottenham. And Tottenham are up. They're a good team, but not a great team. You know, they've got a, 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 a striker who scores a lot of goals. Defence is not as good as before. Midfield is a bit all over the place. Like, it's not looking good so far. It was a terrible beginning of the season. But on Everton style, they looked exciting. Um, Richarlison could have scored about five, six goals. Like, he kept missing. Doing the same thing, cutting in, trying to place the ball. But um, on another day, he could have scored a hat-trick. Like I said, um, Hammers Rodriguez, James Rodriguez... Excellent game, excellent debut, very composed on the ball, played a lot of great passes, created a lot of chances, just looked really good. Suits the Premier League so far anyways. That was the first game of the season, so we're not going to try to hype over too much. But Everton looked quite good, you know. And they've got a manager as well, who a great one of the greatest managers as well, has won everything that is to win in football. Um, but, but as we can see with him at least, we know what system he's trying to play. You know, we know what Ancelotti wants from his team. There's still some type of philosophy. And that's the problem Mourinho has. He doesn't have a philosophy. Like, all he knows is trying to st like stay compact and try not to concede. But unfortunately, his team is conceding. So there's no plan B with him. So moving on, Wolves to Sheffield United nil. Wolves, again, started the season on fire. Um, very exciting team. Very exciting manager. And a manager that definitely will get an opportunity, I feel like, managing the top four team in the future if he continues what he's doing at Wolves right now, man. He's already cemented a reputation for himself anyways. Everyone knows who he is today and everyone likes the way Wolves play football. We've got exciting wingers, um, very exciting team to watch. And again, a team that I feel like will definitely fight for the lot. Top top seven, top eight, definitely. Um, and the last game of the season, I mean, sorry, of the beginning of the season was Chelsea versus Brighton, or Brighton versus Chelsea. Chelsea won 3-1. Again, I've seen a lot of people talking about the goalkeeper, uh, even though Chelsea won 3-1. Um, Kepa is a keeper, again, who Chelsea spent £71 million on. And this is the thing. When you come to the Premier League, it's not just about um, just playing a week in, week out. It's about performance. Because you know what they do here? The media will death will destroy you. If you can't handle the pressure, the media will destroy you. They will talk about every error you make. Everyone's seen though David De Gea and you can see it's hard for him to recover. But at least David De Gea went over the hurdle and, and competed and became one of the best goalkeepers in the world. But with Kepa, he's still a very young goalkeeper. He's making a lot of mistakes, but I don't think you spend 71 million on the keeper who all of a sudden is shit. There's therefore some confidence issue. We've seen Lampard dropped him um, at some point last season. We've seen he's had issue when Sarri was there. You know, this is a young man who's clearly having a lot of issues. And if he doesn't adapt to the pressure that the Premier League demands in terms of the media, how they will speculate about everything you do, then you won't be able to be consistent. Because that's the thing. The media in this country will destroy you if you don't, have a, uh, if you don't play well. You know, that will destroy you, especially when there's a big price tag on you. But I feel like um, it's been going on for too long. So you might have to go to a different team to kind of regain that reputation that he had before he joined Chelsea. And Chelsea are definitely going to have to have another keeper, at least to challenge Kepa, to at least um, improve his performances. Because, yeah, to have the most conceded goals from outside the box and being a 71 million keeper isn't good enough. So we're yet to see Man City play, we're yet to see Man United play. But I do feel like this season Man City will win the league. Um, I feel like there's a lot to prove. I feel like after the season I had last year, Pep, a guy that's got a lot of pride, um, is definitely going to do his best to make sure Man City win. You know, Man City still, for me, has the best 
overall squad. Um, I feel like Liverpool um, have been consistent, but they've been playing a lot of the time the same team. And I feel like with Liverpool, if you if you lose Mane or Salah, then you lose like 20 goals, 20 to 30 goals. So last year, they were fortunate that they had them for the majority of the season, you know. Uh, Man City, obviously, we know they had problems in the fence and things like that. Um, that was the main issue. And I feel like if they solved this and signed Koulibaly, then it's a wrap. Because City, the way they play football, most times they will win. They dominate so much of the ball. They've got so many creative players. They've got, they've got some of the top, top, top players in the world. Yeah, In Kevin De Bruyne, they've got Aguero, Sterling, um, Mahrez. They've got these players who definitely have a lot of goals in them. So I feel like City have more firepower. And um, yeah, they just have to solve the defensive issues. That's all it is, man. But apart from that, I feel like it'll definitely be that everyone's thinking Liverpool, like it's almost a guarantee they'll finish like first or second. I don't know, you know, because... We've seen a lot of cracks in Liverpool's team in the past few months. And it tends to happen when your team that's done so well for the past two years. You know, maybe some of the players are going downhill. Or maybe some have just lost that ambition. Who knows where it is, isn't it? You kind of need to refresh it. You kind of have to. You know, we've seen that of top, top teams. Real Madrid, Barcelona. We've seen, like, after so many years, you kind of have to refresh. Some of your players, like, the, the quality drops. They're not as good as they were before. Things like that. And Liverpool, it might start to happen. It might start to happen. So, Chelsea strengthened. Man United have a good squad. Um, I love how our team Arsenal is going on at the moment. I wouldn't say Arsenal is fighting for any premiership. But I feel like the way we're set up, we're def we definitely can challenge for the top four. Um, Tottenham, nah. I'm not convinced. Mourinho outdated, like I mentioned. But I feel like it will be quite a, um exciting season we have ahead anyways. So, hopefully that continues, man. So, anyways, thank you for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, share, and um, let me know what you think about who will finish in the top four this season.